you know, Color Codes was always about the writers. One more time, my name is Manny Rackers, DJ A. West, shouts to G4. My dude Touch Nice, all y'all for coming out. Make some noise for all the writers. Um, I think, you know, the, the other elements, uh, they sort of naturally, um, they, they, they naturally infiltrated uh, the scene in the, in the event. And, and that's how it's supposed to be, you know, because hip hop is intertwined like that, you know. There's a, the dope thing about Des Moines is there's a, there's a smaller circle of heads that are actually uh, entrenched in hip hop culture um, in, in the sense that, that we remember it from, you know. Um, and so that means it's not just rap music. Color Codes takes its name from uh, the theme of the event. You know, it's, uh, it's coded colors that are provided to you as established by the administration. So whether it be the character work, uh, background work, fills, or dimension, uh, you know, whatever it is that you incorporate into your joint, you have to use uh, the two coded colors. And they have to be, you know, sort of the primary uh, push of the piece. This year, those two coded colors were uh, teal and orange. You know, and of course, everything begins and ends with the DJ, so, so we definitely had that in the mix. DJ-ism, DJ episode, and DJ Touch Nice, uh, along with uh, DJ I-8 out, uh, out of New Mexico, you know, all rocking the decks. We learned a long time ago that like very, very special and talented people can come from here and be from here and things like that can go on here as well. You know, and so you, it's weird because you hear this self-defeatist attitude from a lot of heads and they, they, they almost act as if it's from Iowa. It can't be good, you know. So Correct Flow began as a series to sort of negate that line of thinking. You know what I mean? Run it down, I'm deep cover with a fish burn The mercury been poisoning 
in the cistern. Little bitches learn twice this kick with sidekicks to the hymen. You are convinced there's value in diamonds, but this is real rock. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. focus was on flow you know the the element of flow being introduced into all of the the hip-hop elements you know is it's an integral part of all of them you know whether you're talking about b-boy transitions or where you're talking about you know how your letters are flowing so at the first one where we had correct flow one there were b-boys there but mcn was the main focus then we had correct flow two break fluid where it was all about b-boying ciphering jamming the whole night you know but maxilla blue did rock uh, and of course, the DJs had to get busy. All right, uh, from here in Des Moines, we're spinning the funk, and uh, you know, for the funk stylist, and then Touch Nice, of course, we're spinning the breaks. Uh, so, enter Correct Flow Three, Color Codes. We had uh, my man Main Rock with Stay Tuned, backed by DJ A What, but then we had my man Chris Disgustin. Uh, Rare Breed got busy with the homeboy Ace from Waterloo. Shouts to Ace, shouts to Rare Breed. Also, uh, you know, myself and Quell uh, of G4, uh, Plate Tech. So that was, that was more or less the debut of Plate Tech, which you should look forward to uh, 2015. It's an exhibition. You know, it's not a, it's not a battle. This is us uh, selecting a group of individuals to create something that the public then has a chance to review and uh, interact with and, uh, you know, form their own opinions about. It'd almost be the same as if, you know, someone was doing a show or, or uh, a play. You know, they have a select cast that they've, that they've uh, put together, um, and that cast is who they feel capable of uh, providing that magic, you know, for the city to see. Yo, 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 it's just our entrance, but we feeling like we back again. Me and my man. This is something we thought was important to uh, bring to the city because there are there are some writers here who really know what they're doing. You know, and uh, you know, from the spreads across the generations, young and old, and we do have a graffiti history here. You know, a lot of people aren't aware of it. Um, the buff is quite vicious here. You know, um, it's it's a very quick turnaround. So, um, a lot of the history is underground, and it's in crates. Um, but it does exist here, and so we really wanted to bring out uh, an event and put on something here to where. Uh, young kids coming up here in the city uh, who can be inspired creatively um, get to see something of this magnitude uh, here in their city. And they don't have to travel to Chicago or New York or L.A. and then come back one summer and tell all their friends what they saw somewhere else. You know, you saw that here. Somebody is freezing out. to come a time when my seat will have to leave the house. But I ain't worried about herself. I worry about what I'll do to the fool who mistakes that for TD for Jezebel. And it's a writer's event, you know, and that's, a, that's an important distinction. Uh, you know, street art is dope. It's uh, something to be respected. I think it's its own vein, but it's not graffiti writing. And uh, a lot of people make that, uh, you know, they misconstrue the two, you know, uh, to be the same thing. I think, you know, when you get into semantics, uh, graffiti, you know, absolutely, graffiti writing in its traditional sense could be uh, considered a form of street art. It is art that is uh, seen and appears in the street and is created in the street. So um, from that aspect, yes. But um, we're talking about traditional graffiti writing, you know, rooted in, uh, you know, understanding and uh, structuring of, of letters, you know, letter form, uh, the written language. Therefore, all the participants uh, are graffiti writers with the history of graffiti writing. Um, you know, not just studio work and, and gallery shows, but but um, but writing. But if you feel it, that's peace. Cause either way, it's like so. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. It's like so. You heard it here first. It's like so. It's like so. You heard it here first. You know, with the help of the Des Moines Social Club, 
Um, they helped us in a lot of different ways, you know, from uh, providing the venue to uh, working with me on planning. So, you know, hats off to the social club uh, for their assistance, because honestly, it, it just wouldn't have happened um, had they not had a hand in it. We were exactly where y'all are five years ago, trying to get the word out there that this is something that's constructive and highly new, especially since there's a decrease of uh, art and music yeah. programs in schools. It's imperative for us as a culture. Um, people always say that there's no positive influence in hip hop culture, and if you are a part of hip hop culture, then you have the ability and the obligation to be a positive. Down here, first time in Des Moines, first time in Iowa, a lot of hospitality, a lot of good artists out here. <laughs> Now become subliminal. Six out of consolations for smoking instead of brazen dropping blades on a snake half but couldn't kill them all. A couple they escaped death. One galaxy over where them planets of the apes went. For harboring these fugitives and worshiping these faces, they gon' line them all against the wall and smash them all the apes. Like, honey, you grab the mean street, I grabbed the can, and we just started walking up down the street. <laughs> well, I was like, oh shit, that hood looks like a uh, cop car. When we heard the uh, 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 that noise, we like, oh, it's time to go. Look at the time, guys. Yo, it's a great night. The whole time. <laughs> yeah.